Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and I'm playing with this Demise True Draco list yet again. Still playing with the domain in the main, just because I feel like it's just decent enough to keep in the main against the people that I play against. Like I said in the previous video, contextually, in the Maximum Crisis format, this card loses a lot of its merit and value. It's definitely a side deckable card, uh, if you play this deck. Uh, but um, but it's definitely it definitely loses a lot of its value against the True King matchup against this deck's mirror match uh, Like all that sort of stuff like it just it loses a bunch of value You could definitely side deck the card But I don't know how you would effectively side it since you do have to keep your extra deck pretty low so that you could like side out um, Like extra deck cards, but no that wouldn't even work now that I think about because you have to side out extra deck cards and side in extra deck cards So there's literally like you either main deck domain or you just don't <laughs> So now that we've gotten that out of the way I wanted to play this deck again for another video, uh, just to just get some more results for it, because that's literally what I try to do with my channel, is just do live games uh, and get results out of it, uh, basically. For playtesting purposes, for thought processes, for all that sort of stuff, that's what we're here for. Uh, Masterpiece is still one fucked up card, uh, like, this entire Drew Draco, like, archetype is insane to me, I love how it interacts, uh, I love how it interacts with, like, all of this stuff, with the spell and trap and stuff. Uh, the spell and traps having destruction effects built in while also being a cards that allow you to establish masterpiece on your opponent's turn You get value out of your things like dynamite knuckle and ignis heat like uh, I mm, have such good mm, 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 Good feelings about this archetype whenever I play it because it's so well fleshed out It's so well rounded and this isn't even the entire archetype the true kings are part of it as well and that's what like fucks with me even more. Like it's a it's a dual archetype. It's it's true Draco and true King. It's all inclusive, and like it's just so well built around itself and so well fleshed out. God, I love this archetype. But anyway, <laughs> we're not gonna waste any more time just literally drooling over this archetype. We're just gonna jump straight into the game and see how that goes. Because like I said, we're here for results and we're here for uh, thought processes and. Uh, and things like that. I often like to rewatch my videos and see what my thought processes were in certain situations and see how my opinions and thoughts have differed from back then. So I mean that's that's one of the reasons why I like doing live commentary because it allows me as well to just like basically like analyze how I've grown as a player thought process wise and stuff like that. But anyway, enough of that. Let's just jump straight into the game and see how this goes. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just going on a roll with uh with playing this deck. I actually don't care if I go first or second with this deck. This is actually just a really unique feeling because of the fact that all of these like spells and traps out back row and stuff like that. But he actually won Rock Paper Scissors and told me to go first. Which is interesting to say the very least. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of these. I'm going to have to demise for only two, which is going to kind of suck. Um, but I mean, shit. Like, might as well, right? Might as well get there if we're able to get there. Uh, so that's Revival of the True Kings, and so this is Disciples, so we can we can mess with this. We can we can we can mess with this completely. Because I'll be able to set this if Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro wants to respond. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but he just wasn't responding. This deck is so thick, I just now looked over and saw how big his deck was. Um, it's a 60 card deck, which means that I could potentially have some problems. Uh no. And no, uh, that's the biggest thing. I don't like really doing this sort of stuff turn one uh, because of the fact that like these things get so much value if they just are like remaining like static on the board. Uh, but uh, all that stuff is uh, relevant. Now, what I could have done is I actually, well, no, I couldn't have because I had Card of Demise. Uh, if Card of Demise wasn't involved in that hand and I just had those cards in general, uh, those five cards. Um, I could have uh, used this on my opponent's turn and then tribute summoned for this on his turn and used this as a disruption alongside Masterpiece. Uh, but as it stands, nah, we're not messing with that. We don't we don't have that sort of stuff. Now, okay, this is 60 card Zombies. Alright, so I don't know if it's Zombie Sworn. I'd imagine it is. Ah, oh, King of the Skull Servants. <laughs> well, alrighty then. Uh, you can have that one King of the Skull Servants. Um, I'm going to be able to use Masterpiece to pop it at any point. Why is its picture not loaded in? This is literally only a problem I have when I play against Stag. I don't get it, uh, where the picture just doesn't load in, and it makes me kind of upset. Uh, okay, so he banished another left arm offering and an instant fusion. I feel like you probably just should have active. You probably could have just activated that instant fusion first. Or wait, you allured and got rid of a Unizombie. 
You could have Unizombied, sent Mizuki, then instant fusioned it back, and then left arm offering. Hmm. Maybe you just know something that I don't, because I've never played a, I've never played like a Skull Servant zombie deck in general. Never, never in my life. Um, but uh, like, this is, this is a, uh, this is something that I'm not really too keen on. Is the the way that this is going. Uh, but so this is affected by monsters, so we can Fairy Tale Snow this card. Um, and he just milled Shadal Squamata, two Mizukis, a Shadal Dragon. Uh, Beast Dragon is going to destroy the Solemn Warning, and Squamata is activating. Uh, I am going to... Yeah, you're okay to let that go. Um, I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna pop the King of the Skull Servants until it gets to battle phase. Uh, because of the fact that he's got Mizuki's engrave. I mean, like, that would be the smart thing to do. <sighs> but, so, that sends Falco, and Falco will be able to come back. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. This is the, this is the question that we've got to answer our, ask ourselves. Now, he's, gonna be, he's not going to be able to set spells or traps this turn because of left arm. Uh, but, I'm capable of outing this King of the Skull Servants at least once. Uh, Fairy Tale Snow, this is gonna have to be, like, oh, this is gonna be such a fucking problem. No, I don't want to deal with this. I don't. I don't. It's gonna be striked, and then it's gonna come back again anyway. Um, okay, so he's got those in grave. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just, ah, fuck, we'll just strike it. I mean, we kind of just have to, in essence. Like, we're, I'm just gonna lose this game 100%. Um, like, the lawn mowing there was super good. Uh, I still think that summoning Unizombie and sending Mizuki and then inst Well, no, you couldn't instant fusion because the domain is up, so you do know something that I didn't know. I'm just not respecting my own cards that I've got on the field. <laughs> that would be why. That would be why this thing is going on. Uh, but so he's gonna be able to Fairy Tale Snow, right? He's gonna be able to summon it and just put my, uh, Masterpiece face down. And that sucks. Like, the fact that Fairy Tale Snow is in this picture is just absolutely a ball ache. Now, fuck that card. Um, fuck this Fairy Tale Snow card. <laughs> uh, now, I need to check what's in his graveyard when this activates. Um, yes, would love to. Uh, he's got two Mizukis still, uh, which I've got to basically... I can use this to banish and pop the Falco. I could pop this, it's gonna come back, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, we'll pop the Falco. We just don't want him getting free interactions and free uh, card advantage. He's gotta attack over this with the King of the Skull Servants, so I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, but knowing my luck, I'm gonna draw something like, um, like, uh, well, actually, I just lose here! Whoa! 100% lose. How did this go down to five? Uh, how did it go down from five to, to, uh, to four? Oh, he banished something for snow? Yes? I don't know. Um, I don't lose this turn, though. If these were both at 5k still, then I would definitely just lose this game 100% handily. Uh, but I could still just draw the field spell and lose. <laughs> True Draco Succession, that card doesn't do shit! Uh, yeah, so I just lose here. I 100% lose to Skull Servants. Interesting. I mean, Lawn Mowing is a powerful card. That Grass Looks Greener is a powerful-ass card. Um, <laughs> there's not really much that I can do about that. Uh, yeah. Wow. This was not what I was expecting to have to deal with, but hey, whatever. It's a, it's results. <laughs> if this is actually a problem for this deck, then it might be just a reason not to play it. But so, White Prince here, does he actually have three targets in his deck? That would be insane. That would be insane if he does. He does! Whoa! So these are all 77. But these got halved. What? Why is this at such a random number? What am I missing here? I don't know. I don't care. It's probably something to do with that White Princess. Uh, I haven't actually read that card. All I know is it sends White Prince to Grave, and that's like the most relevant part of it. Um, but I haven't read the rest of that card's effect. Uh, that's the only thing I know about it. But yeah, goddamn. Got diddled by the King of the Skull Servants. That's not something I was expecting to deal with. But, like I said, it's a result. Can't be mad about it. It's a result. Lawn mowing for like, uh, what, like 20 cards or something like that was pretty strong. Hitting the Mizukis and all that. Pretty good. Alright. We can deal with these. Uh, that, especially since, like, my opening hand wasn't that strong anyway, and he told me to go first, 
So like, yeah, there's there's a there's a few different justifications that can be made for why the result was the way it was. Uh, because my hand was weak, I was going first, I didn't demise optimally, I didn't have any like relevant like amazing plays to back myself up um, and stuff like that. So I guess it's 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 you can look at it in any way, shape, or form that you want to. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis to one random winner from my Patreon, and it'll be uh, it'll be a giveaway that happens like in the first week of May once the set drops and is available in stores. Uh, but if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video with hopefully a different result.